Ključtevini in zagotovinom vlade njegovega veličanstva doslej jugoslovanskim sodiščem ni bil izročen niti en italijanski vojni zločinec. Britansko zunanje ministerstvo je bilo v skrbeh. Zapisali so, nekatere od teh oseb zasedajo visoke položaje v italijanskem vojnem ministerstvu, zato bi njihova retacija pomenila politično zadrego. Zaveznikom so dejali zgledno pomoč, če bi jih zdaj retirali, bi povzročili pretres v italijanski vladi in javnem mnenju, ker bi tudi nas potegnilo težave in ob splošnem zgraženju povzročilo veliko zagrenjenost. Arej Beaumont iz odseka zunanjega ministerstva za vojne zločine je po pregledu argumentov v svojem poročilu zapisal, pradica zahteva izročitev teh ljudi, toda koristi, žal temu nasprotujejo vsaj izročitvi tistih na visokih položajih. 26. aprila 1946 je Lord Halifax v Vašingtonu prenesel ameriško stališče. State Department meni, da bi bilo za obe vladi najbolje, če bi poskusili zavlačevati. J.R. Colville iz britanskega foreign officea se je strinjal. Zdi se mi, da bi bilo v tem primeru za vse, tem bolje, čim glje zavlačujemo. Britanci so obvestili ugostovane, da primer zahteva temeljito proučitev in jih prosili za več časa za ukvarjanje s to težavo. Now, under the armistice, the Allies couldn't refuse to send people to countries like Yugoslavia or Greece. Since they couldn't refuse, and they obviously w had no uh, inclination to send these people for a trial uh, overseas, obviously they engaged in a, a pattern of stalling. And they would tell the government of Yugoslavia, for example, that they needed more time to prepare cases, they couldn't find these people, and used every available uh, stalling technique. Their hope was that eventually the occupation would end and then the problem would be shifted to the Italian government, which they knew perfectly well the Italian government would never hand over any of its citizens for trial in, in Yugoslavia. And indeed, the Italians, uh, as, a, as a way of preventing this, had put many of these people on trial, uh, who were accused of war crimes, tried them in Italian court, and of course acquitted them, thus making it even less likely for uh, any Italian uh, accused of war crimes to be tried in Yugoslavia and other countries. Ker v začetku leta 1947 še vedno niso izročili nobenega italijanskega vojnega zločinca, medtem ko so italijani lahko sodili nemškim vojnim zločincem za zločine proti italijanskim civilistom, so jugoslovani znova postali Britancem peticijo. Kljub jasnim mednarodnim obveznostim sta britanska in ameriška vlada z različnimi izgovori zavlečevali z izročitvijo vojnih zločincev, zato do danes niso jugoslovanskim oblastim izročili niti enega od 750 italijanskih vojnih zločincev, se znama Komisije Združenih narodov za vojne zločine. Strpnost do takšnega stanja ustvarja v Italiji razmere, ki ogrožejo miroljubni razvoj mednarodnih odnosov v tem delu Evrope. Do teda je Britansko zunanje ministerstvo že dovolj dolgo zavlečevalo, da je lahko vsaj del odgovornosti preneslo na italijane. Teden dni po prejemu jugoslovanskega pisma je admiral Stone iz Zavezniške nadzorne komisije poročal, ker so Zavezniško vojaško vlado ukinili po vsej Italiji, je treba prošnje za izročitev italijano navedenih v seznamu Komisije za vojne zločine naslobiti neposredno na italijansko vlado. Yugoslavia at that time, for the first three years after the war, was considered as part of Stalin's Eastern European Empire. Uh, hence, uh, the whole issue came into this general framework of political divisions. And in Italy, there was still some kind of public opinion, some kind of attachment to the names of the leaders of the armed forces who were, in the mind of the Italians, distinguished as something not necessarily fascist. And about the crimes which were committed in Yugoslavia, 
a large section of public opinion in Italy didn't know much, so that the whole issue was judged on a political basis, uh, which was very remote from the essential issue, and that is whether a person committed war crimes or not. That was, so to say, overshadowed by political considerations. Ker je Jugoslavia pritiskala tako na zaveznike, kot na italijansko vlado, je F.F. Garner iz oceka za vane zločine pri britanskem zadanju ministerstvu pripravil smernice morebitnega britanskega ravnanja glede na jugoslavansko grožnjo. Predlagal je na zaveznike razmislijo samo o zahtevah za izročitev zločincev, ki jih prejmejo po diplomatskih kanalih. Tehnično pa jugoslavani takih zahtev niso mogli podati, ker v Rimu niso imeli veleposlanika. To stališče ni trdno, ga je pa mogoče zagovarjati. Opozoril je tudi, da Moskovska deklaracija iz leta 43 vsebuje pravno zanko. Razume se, da je bila beseda Nemške ustavljena kot pomota pri osnutku, vendar ni razloga, da je ne bi izkoristili. Garner je predlagal, naj v primeru, da bi se pritisk nadaljeval vlada v Rimu, sodi nekaj nepomembnim fašistom. Čeprav tako dejanje italijanov ne bi razbremenilo pravne odgovornosti za izročitev osebe, ki bi jih sodili, pa bi zagotovilo trdne moralne temelje in bi bilo vsakem primeru odgovor na jugoslavanske pritožbe, da proti vojnim zločincem ni bilo storjeno nič. Vsemba Moskva deklaracija je ne bi bilo vsega Čermans od Italijans. Je bi bilo vsega evropska aksija. I think we find it difficult to realize this now, that the statesmen of 43 talked in grand, sweeping national, international declarations to ring around the world. The gap between what they said should be done, taking the accused back to face their accusers in any part of the world, wherever their crimes are, and as long as they're alive, this was grandiose stuff. What actually happened was something far otherwise, very modest, and in the end, the bitter part was, as far as the British were concerned, was, How soon do we get out of this commitment? It's expensive, it isn't popular, it loses votes and it might lose friends. Britanska vlada se je zanimala predvsem za sojenje italijanom za zločine proti britanskemu osebju. Eden takih je bil primer generala Nicole Beloma. Obtožen je bil, da je kriv za smrt britanskih vojnih ujetnikov, ki so jih stražarji ustrelili med poskusom pobega. Aretirali so ga na njegovem domu v Barju, in postav je edini italijan, ki so ga zavezniki usmrtili. O procesu je za britanski časopis poročal vojni dopisnik Cyril Ray. Določene nepravilnosti na sojenju so ga tako znemirile, da je poslal nujni telegram oglednemu laborističnemu postancu Ivoriu Thomasu. Zgrožen sem nad zavrnitvijo priziva generala Veloma proti smrtni obsodbi. Bil sem na vzoč vse čas procesa in nisem edini britanski poročevalec, ki meni, Prvič, da je razsodba prestroga glede na dokaze, drugič, da zagovornik ni bil enakovreden to živcem in tretič, da niso dovolj upoštevali o leševalnih okoliščin in dobrega značaja obtoženca. Če tudi je belomo kriv, je samo nepomembna oseba v primerjavi z nekdanjimi fašisti, s katerimi smo imeli in še imamo opravka. Ni pomemben naš ugled, mora več belomova pravica, da v veljavi dvom, ki obstaja v tem primeru. Hvaležen bi vam bil, če bi lahko kaj pomagali. Cyril Ray, Rim. The defense lawyer of the family, uh, Russo Fratasi, uh, obtained all the authorizations to enter into the, the court and assist the defense. But he was stopped by the guards on the entrance in, in spite of the fact that he was able to show all the authorization papers. In, and so on. I can continue with the list of illegal acts, but what is important is to say that uh, any other trial was in, during that time was not conducted in, in such a way. Beloma was the only real anti-fascist general in the Italian army and had indeed aw been awarded a silver medal for bravery in fighting against the Germans at Bari. But the Badoglio clique uh, didn't like Belomo because the fact that Belomo had fought the Germans so convincingly showed up those Italians who should have fought the Germans after the agreement they had with the Allies, but ran the other way. Belomo didn't run the other way, and that's why he was unpopular with his colleagues who hadn't shown as much courage. 